This here is my Woodmaster planer, and I've used this thing some, but not a ton. I, I did go and buy new blades for it, and so I put those in here. But one of the things that concerned me is, is making sure that these blades are out exactly the same distance all the way around. And I didn't really have any tools for that because I bought this used and, well, I suppose the tool was there, but um, I didn't have it. So, I did buy these things here off of Amazon, which turned out to be basically garbage. I mean, you put them on here like so, you set them, and supposedly they'll, the magnet pulls the blade out to the same spot each time. I did that, and then when I got done with a lot of care and consternation, uh, I put something underneath here and just turned the blades by hand, and I discovered that one blade hit uh, my piece before everything else did, so obviously that wasn't right. And at this point in the video, I haven't done the math or the mock-up yet to figure out exactly what kind of tolerance you would need on this to actually get every blade to cut at least to some degree as you're moving a board through here. Anyway, this is my setup now. So as you can see, I've got this gauge on here and I just mounted it on the back and clamped it on here and then I have it so it will touch the uh, the main uh, part of the shaft and then as I go up like this it rides up and I basically look for the very maximum reading that I can find and I kind of did this an average of several and I've got my reading just happens to be 1160, but that's all relative. I mean, that means nothing for your planer. It's just for my planer and the way the blades are set. And so I'm going about this, um, loosening these up and then tightening them just so where they, um, you know, you loosen them up to the, till they're loose, right? And then you just tighten them up so you just feel it a little bit so they hold that blade in place feel it loosen it up like that and just feel it like that and that way I can tighten this little screw here or loosen that screw and mainly I want to actually uh, push that screw in to the point where the blade is in farther than it needs to be and then gradually work it outward until my blade is at the right distance. So A, I'm curious if anybody else does something like this or not. Um, maybe I'm being too persnickety. And of course, the other thing you got to make sure that whatever you mount this to has to be at least reasonably solid and consistent, which I think that is for me. At least it seems to be so far. So... I'm going to go like this here. Let it ride up seven. Okay. I'm going to take it. Put this down a little bit here. Actually, I'm going to make sure that I've got these in just a little bit. Because I did have them snugged just a little bit and am I in trouble for giving that a wrap with a piece of wood hopefully not this is the tricky part here okay so that's 1140 so I got to come out just a little bit so I actually do like this. Yeah, I 
like it, I think. Okay. Taken. Just give it a skosh inward there. It's hardly nothing. And then I'm going to take and tighten these on this end here. So it kind of has a pivot point over on this end. I'm kind of doing one side at a time here. There we go. And then my trick for doing this, so it doesn't get caught in this hole right here, this groove, is just to put this thing here in there. So I'm going to go up and check this one first. Okay, so that's within like ten thousandths or whatever. Put this on there, get it up and over, and go to the next one here. Check this one. Okay. Go up to the next one here. Okay. So they're all within a thousandth, basically. So I'm going to move over there and do the same thing over on the other side. So when I'm doing this, I'm not going to assume that this blade wouldn't potentially have some bow across this long distance here. So I'm actually doing this side, and I walked over to that side and did that one over there. And now I'm going to do approximately in the center here as well to make sure that I get any bow out of it. I think that's as persnickety as I need to be right now. So since we're going down this nerd path here, let's just keep going. And, and and I did this little representation of CAD here, okay, of a cutter head, a board, and then we're going to move the cutter head forward. Now, let me pull in my, my math here. And so we'll look at the math. <clears throat> the math here for the 725 planer is just estimates, but... Feed rate is about 34 inches per minute. The typical rate, if you turn the knob in the middle, 17 uh, feet per minute, rather. Feet per minute, sorry. Um, which translates into about 34 inches per second. Okay. And then we've got our motor speed, our pulley ratio, our head speed of probably around 4,000 RPM, something like that. I mean, I could be off, right? It could be 5,000, could be whatever, but... It's not an order of magnitude out of this range. It's ballparkish. We're just spitballing numbers here. And we've got our max cut, which um, I've got at 3 sixteenths of an inch. That seems probably pretty heavy, but, you know, typical, maybe more like a sixteenth of an inch, something like that, give or take. Um, the diameter of the knives or the diameter at the knives uh, on my cutter head is about three and a quarter inches, something like that, because they extend out from the the main body of the of the head a little bit, certainly. And then we're going to look at the head uh, speed in terms of seconds per revolution. So it's about 0 0.015 seconds for every time that head goes round. Divide by three to get the number of seconds from blade to blade, because there's three blades on the head. And then let's just assume that we're running at that mid-range point, the typical feed rate of 17 feet per minute, and go down here, and we're going to see that we would move forward about 0 0.017 or 17 thousandths of an inch from the time one blade hits the, the wood till the time the next blade hits the wood. So that's about the forward uh, travel um, that would happen. So this is just the ballpark numbers again. So let's move this out of the way again and look at the model here. 
uh, probably a little bit blurry for you from here, but I'm going to zoom in on this thing and let's just zoom in and see what this measurement was right here. Okay. So as we move forward, we can see that the red line and there was a blade here and then we turned this 120 degrees we moved it forward so the next blade which is an orange comes into play and we've got this little bitty distance in here of the amount of wood that we took off at, <clears throat> at really the maximum point here and i probably should redo this dimension it's not going to make a difference to the price of rice but let's just redo that because it should come from right there okay down to here and then we'll just grab that dimension like that and let's see what that is so that's point zero six six thousandths of an inch at the very best case i mean if you go down to here right it really goes down to to nothing this goes down to let me scroll over a little bit here but at the bottom you know it's almost down to infinity there right so this means that if your blades are not within six thousandths of an inch you're not even touching the wood as the next blade comes into play so maybe if you know it doesn't matter the order right but if if one blade is is less than the others and it comes around it's not even going to touch the wood for sure it's not going to touch it down here but even the best case which is up toward the edge here um, you're not going to be touching the wood so this kind of proves that these do need to be set very accurately and you know I can easily come up with a scenario where you're going slower feed rate uh, taking less of a pass where this number would be a lot less and your blades have to be a lot more accurate to be useful now I know there's the wood has you know some elasticity in it it's kind of getting hit with the blade and you know it's not a not a perfect world it's not a perfect solid etc I know all that but this is you know we're just kind of dealing in in theories here anyway so it's a mind exercise so that's pretty much it for the video um, I'm gonna leave maybe a link to some of the stuff they have on on sawmills for measuring blade tension and so on that might be of interest up here too and you can go check that out and let me know in the comments uh, what your thoughts are um, if you think I'm off base for some reason on this or if you think it uh, makes sense or you think I should put up the math in the description uh, on, on how to just you know calculate this out I, I don't know if it's worth the exercise but uh, perhaps if enough people are really interested or even care that's it thank you for watching and we'll see you around